And hello everyone! Today we are back with episode 19 of our computer crafter series. Today we are going to continue with the turtle. And hopefully we are going to work on the receiving side of our communication system that we worked on in the last episode. One thing that I've noticed on the turtle, on which we will start today, is that it kind of has a flaw. And that is, if there is a block underneath the turtle, when it has to go down, it will never go down. Usually that should not happen, but what happened in the game was a combination of lava and water that can spawn uh, a particular type of stone underneath the turtle and that would not make it go down. I thought we had already tackled that, but apparently uh, we have missed something for that in our turtle API, or at least the turtle uh, functions in our API. So if it goes down or wants to go down, turtle down, which is false at the moment, it will just wait and sleep, it won't do anything else. Uh, I think a good addition would be uh, to add here. Do we have a special dig down or just dig? Dig up, not a special dig down. And dig down here. It should at least break the, break the blocks. Maybe um, that would mean that it will just stay in that position um, but maybe that will just be the lucky thing um, that does also mean that it can happen that there are mobs underneath the turtle and then it will just wait but mobs, mobs can wait uh, mobs can pretty much stand still there most of the time so we kind of have to attack them as well yeah we are just going to do that And that should also be included in the go up. Does it? Um, yeah, I think we will add that as well. Maybe it's not necessary, but yeah. let's try. <laughs> for going back that one is a bit more difficult i think uh, let's not bother with that for now that should at least fix that issue uh, we won't see it in action anytime soon and our next turtle is still a long way away from getting into that dangerous zone or at least i think so Let's just let him mine for 20 blocks and uh, see where he is going to. In the meantime, we're going to take a look at my old setup that I used for receiving information. Uh, we have looked at this in the past. It's pretty much one PC which is responsible for receiving data and showing it on the monitor. On the monitor. And in some special occasions, uh, send special information back to a device. Uh, what I noticed in the past is that while the requests on this PC can either not be in use or the modem is already busy with something else, and then you will lose some messages. So I think it's a bit more efficient and also more redundant to have at least one PC, but it would be great if there were two PCs. Um, pretty much just monitoring the, the entire time for information. Uh, so one will be active and one will be well, passively there. And that can take over if the main computer uh, stops working for any particular reason, which will be most of the times just a simple restart. And I think I already tried to build that in the past. 
that uh, <laughs> that failed. So there's one PC which is currently this one is running, and if something is sent over the network, it will print it on the monitor, or at least it will try to. If this too long, then it will just be outside of the window. That's pretty much what it did, and I want to replace that by a similar system, but a bit more advanced. A small one small catch is that uh, we have to do it in a limited space simply due to game mechanics. So we have an area of 16 by 16. Um, well, pretty much here. <laughs> it doesn't really have a nicer place, sadly. Oh, well, I kind of made up my mind and I want to go for one PC, which is active all the time, one passive, and a third one will read from a floppy, just a storage medium, uh, to what to display on the monitor. So that's kind of, I think, what we are going to do now. It's rather getting it to work, which will be the hardest part. And with a network cable, we can go up uh, through this ceiling to uh, a monitor. So let's get a label on this PC, label set um, data, why not, find the ID, number 89, and edit our usual file, so it does show up in File Explorer. I will copy over our config brave and normal script, I don't think we are going to use our normal script since it, that doesn't really make sense here but at least we will carry over our API file that one will be extended a little bit further let's close these for now and open those again just so we are sure that we are working in our latest version uh, and we can use several things from here uh, of course Find our modem, the important one. I want to make a separate one for finding a um, uh, floppy drive. Then we have our get device type, it's not really necessary as at this time. Send information is also not so important, but the convert, for, convert info function. Well, that's pretty much the most important thing that we. Uh, will have in this uh, in this API for this PC since that's everything that it will be doing reading from the network writing it to a file that's it <laughs> nothing else actually let's get that to work uh, we won't need these I think we don't need this for loop at least we need different parameters for our setup and a config file. I don't think we need config file loaded. No, let's, let's keep it loaded. You never know when it's going to be handy. So we are going to start with initializing where our modem is. The local modem equals how did it how was it called here? Find modem brave dot find modem and we need a wireless modem and hopefully that will work. <laughs> and then ah oh, yeah we need our config file our uh, wireless channel config then modem at open config dot wireless wireless channel I believe that was it right wireless channel yes so that should open
Yeah, okay, that's interesting. At nine. Config dot wireless at nine. Oh, if that open is nothing special. Wireless channel. We just make this one. And attempt to index a Boolean value. So this is not working. Find modem. Brave dot find modem. That's exactly what the test. And top is available. So should go through all the sites and find modem. What is going on here? Uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it does only return the side. Okay. How did I do that on our previous computer? Which is this one, I, th I think. Here we did it. If wireless. Oh, that's just our previous attempt. Okay. So wireless and side is what we get back. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> that took a moment. Uh, and we first get a wireless back. And then we get the side back. That if wireless, then. So if wireless. Then um, local modem. Uh, local can get rid of here. Local local can get rid. Modem equals dot wrap uh, side. Prefer all, otherwise we'll get that for our issue. And that should work now. And indeed it does. And it opened modem. Okay. Local modem equals equal. Um, some string doesn't really matter what it is. Well, as we have it there, the same is true for side and local wireless is false. Just need to give it a boolean value and then it will work. And in our case, if it isn't wireless, then it should not start at all. That works. Now the interest part is almost there. We did this for a modem, but we also need it for a drive. And I think it's just a drive. There's only one way to find it out. Um, I want uh, type equals to peripheral wrap, I think. On this time, the left side. And then we have um, print, no, oh, just peripheral get not methods I think there are more things names type yeah and type bring uh, expected called table why does it get a table uh, 
You can also just specify left side. That'll work. It's just a drive. Guy, oh, <laughs> you guys couldn't see that. But. Oh, sorry, that was hidden. This was uh, what I was doing. And I pretty much just tried to look at what left of the computer was, which is in this case a drive. So that's what we need to specify in our API. So everything still is the same. This is find drive, of course. And we don't need any arguments here. It will just be a drive. Um, this is the same, this is the same, only this is going to change, aside, then, this can all go, and we only need to return the sign, and if nothing is there, and can return a nil. We are expecting to find something. And if that doesn't happen, then it should be uh, noticeable. At least that's what I think. Okay, so that should do it. Um, okay, let's open the comments while we are here. Find the drive or any sign. Info, input info needs uh, to be a boolean. No, it's not uh, what's going on here. So that should return the side of the drive, which in turn. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> That's a bit too much information. That doesn't need to happen. Um, in fact, I think this needs to be ha happening at the very end. So I have everything else filled, it will at least return a nil value. So find drive will be the next one. Is the all opening stuff. Um, this local is no longer necessary here. Uh, drive equals player. Red. Uh, for that we need brave dot um, what did you say find drive that should wrap the uh, drive for us hopefully <laughs> And let's see what we can do with that. Now for that, I want to go and take a look at my older scripts real quick. I think this is what I used before, to write the information. And I think also with that, we don't really need wrap our drive at all. It will kind of know where to go, I think. So maybe that's correct, maybe it isn't. So it's basically just opening a file, uh, writing to it and then closing it. At least in my case, that's kind of the same as writing data to an SD card. Somewhat simplified in this case, but that's uh, kind of the essential of the essence. Uh, it's kind of the essence of the, uh, of the plan at least. Uh, I do look at the clock and I see that we are kind of past our time right now. So the actual writing will file with the build up and stuff. That's going to be in the next episode, which will be episode 20. Uh, for now, I'm a bit sorry to keep going at, uh, at such a cliffhanger. Uh, but next time we will continue with working on our writing will file everything that we receive from the network i hope you have still enjoyed it and i hope to see you next time
Bye-bye.